Have you ever wanted to make your own game? Get into the game business? Have you ever tried making a game before? Even a board game? For this, I'm going to be telling you what is need to make, what need to make games. Software, artists, and programmers. Many games started off small. That includes World of Warcraft, Angry Birds, League of Legends. No game actually started off, actually came out huge with hundreds of people working on it and making millions of dollars. Everything started small, even Sony and Nintendo. For example, Blizzard only started with a handful of people. Then they grew bigger and bigger, making the best games ever. World of Warcraft, the Diablo series, and the StarCraft series. League of Legends only started off with about eight people, but a few million dollars that they got from a, got from a friend that they used for equipment. And to create your own game, you need some equipment. Game software, if you don't know how to write your own code, form of programming, and art software. Many people think that video games are a waste of time and do nothing for you. But look at the military. They use video games for simulations, for soldiers, and to recruit people. There are the bad parts of video games, though. They can cause divorce or they can cause a death. Video games can cause many problems or they can be used for many solutions. My main goal is to get your creative juices flowing and start doing something you never thought you would even like or even thought you would ever do. Making games isn't just a hobby for many, it's a way of life. They spend hours upon hours making the greatest things in the world. Look at how long it took to make Scarf, three years, or even any other huge game. For example, the Diablo 3 that was supposed to come out next month has been in production for about 11 years. So you want to make a game. It's not so easy, it can take a lot of your time. You might think, that's easy, I can do it, but can you really? Making games isn't like taking a walk in a park. It takes time and sometimes money. There are many free programs you can get online, but to really make a game, you need to start from scratch. Personally, I can't start from scratch. I don't know Java or Python, two coding styles used, so I just use a free software. I've yet to find a free software that I like, but I know one that you have to buy, but it's really fun to use. Easy to understand and doesn't cost that much. It's called Multimedia 2. I used it in my game design class last semester. But looking at free software for more than just making a game, you can get the Reality Factory, which is used for maps and backgrounds, or you can download Blender, a free open source animation program. It's hard to get used to, but can take you a long way in the game art world. To get you started in the game design world, you can go to some colleges that offer game design, art, or programming as a major, like UW-Stout or UW-Whitewater. But if you're looking for a private college that offers more into your degree, then you can look at the University of Advancing Technologies located down in Arizona. This private school offers a lot to the game design department. They have everything you could ever dream for when making games, but they cost an arm and a leg. So if you want to go to a local school, then UW Stout or Whitewater would be your choice. They have a great department and can give you the same amount of knowledge, just one teaches you while the other gets you ready for life. Which is which you pick, it's all your decision. So developing a game. It, not so easy, but so much fun. With that, I'll be telling you the two biggest people in the game industry and what they do for their jobs. The programmer and the artist. People might think it's just the player, player but if it wasn't for the programmer or the artist, you, couldn't even, you wouldn't even have a game to play. The programmer usually uses Java or C++, maybe even Python. These are some of the major ways to make video games. Sometimes they might use programs that have everything already programmed for them and just place them into the game, but that's not usually the case. Artists might use Blender, the Reality Factory, or even Adobe Photoshop Illustrator to make their part of the game. The pro programmer can specialize in items, characters, and the artist might specialize in 3D or animation. But to sum it all up, sum it all up, sum it all up you, I can get a free software to learn about game design, or you can code it yourself. You learn about game art, you learned about game art in different schools you can go to, and you learned a little about artists and programmers. If you ever want to know more, you can talk to me or you can look up stuff on the internet. I have a video. There because it talks about you know, what I'm this that puts it she does for her job. The best design process actually always starts on paper. It's always a good idea to start on paper because you just kind of think things through and you plan things out better. Plus, paper is really cheap. 
right? This idea that you, you do something on paper, it doesn't take very long, it's very quick, uh, and you mean throw it away and you don't care. So if it comes out bad, you're like, oh, okay, I, I wasted like an hour. Once you have a fairly decent idea on paper and that you're fairly sure it's gonna be good, then you start building it in the editor, but you don't build it pretty. You build it very ugly, very quick, fast, you know, as, as... And that's what you should start off with, just doing it on paper. 